The nation's largest private employer had its first strike on Black Friday, November 23rd, as 28 Walmart stores in 12 states went on strike. Protesting low wages, underemployment, lack of benefits, dangerous working conditions, sexual harassment and company retaliation against workers attempting to organize or even speak out, rank-and-file workers were joined on the picket line by labor activists, including members of Occupy Wall Street's Labor Outreach Committee and 99 Pickets. The many actions of the day included a picket in the city of Paramount, California that drew over 1,500 demonstrators and included an act of civil disobedience at which several were arrested. Okay, my name is Carlton Smith, and yes, I'm here on strike. Along with some more of my fellow associates, I work here in the store, it's 2110 Paramount, California. I've been an associate here for 16 years. I want to thank all of you here for being here today and supporting Walmart workers and all working families as we speak up for better working conditions. Good job and an end to retaliation for experience when we stand up for a better life. I'm Reverend Eric Lee, I'm from the Southern Christian Leadership Conference of Greater Los Angeles, Dr. King's organization. And if he were alive today, he'd be at the front of this line protesting against Walmart. something like 40% of the Walmart employee base is eligible for food stamps because their wages are so low that they still qualify. What that means is that the public is subsidizing this corporation in, so that they can make money at the expense of working people. Mic check! Mic check! Attention shoppers! Attention shoppers! We're here today! We're here today! To support Walmart workers! To support Walmart workers! American taxpayers! Subsidize Walmart! I revoke any license you may have had it to be here. I direct you to leave Walmart property immediately. If you do not do so, I will call the police to have you removed. Thank you. Today is Black Friday. That means it's the biggest shopping day of the year. And it's a day when Walmart will take notice that they need to treat their 1.4 million workers with respect. We are here not to be disruptive, but because we want to let everyone know that we support the workers who are fighting for their wages. Workers here at Walmart are exploited, and when the workers at Walmart win, everybody wins. I mean, you're talking about people who are barely making minimum wage, and you've got the six Walmart heirs these six people have more money. 50 million Americans combined. That's not right, and that needs to change, and that's why we're here today. There's a new spirit in the labor movement, and it's, a lot of it is due to Occupy, and that's why they've welcomed us so much. The fact that we identified the labor movement 
as a central organization of the 99%, we were the first mass group that had any influence in general in the media that said labor unions are a good thing. <laughs> And they are very, very happy about that, and they have been very uh, supportive as a result. Today, we wanted to politicize and educate the people on the importance of getting uh, corporations like Walmart out of our community. One, for the smaller businesses that it, that it kind of puts out of business. Last year on Black Friday, they made $50 million, but they refused to pay their employees decent wages and, and a lot of different things that are going on, like hazard insurance they take out on employees where, say, an employee, a rank and file employee passes away. They cash out on these insurance policies, but they don't pay the families any money. So we need corporations like this out of our communities. And what was workers out inside who didn't know that this was happening across the country? and have not been organized and are not walking out today, I'm sure it's giving them encouragement and courage. Uh, and they will at some point be walking out. And eventually Walmart will have a union. There have been lawsuits against Walmart by some of the women who've worked for them. Uh, uh, a group of employees around the country um, a petition uh, not to be required to, to work overtime uh, for Black Friday. Uh, events because many of them were, were called away from uh, family a uh, holiday. I mean, this corporation uh, promotes itself by claiming that it will come into a community and provide jobs and provide both uh, price uh, uh, commodities and, and, and articles in the community that people can afford, uh, which is largely true. But what they don't explain when they're coming into that community is their impact will have a tremendous fallout on small businesses, independent businesses in that community who will be driven out of business because they can't compete against the price scale of a monopoly corporation. That in turn creates actually greater unemployment than Walmart's employment of, of, of people who come in the door as employees for them. That means that the tax base goes down for that community. That means that services and programs of their city or community get cut because there's not enough finance available to maintain even the public school. I mean, LOC uh, has been doing this all along, going to workers' struggles and billing ties to Occupy Wall Street. But now with strike debt, which is raising an issue that affects 75% of the country, and with Occupy Sandy, where people are getting embedded in poor communities, we have finally moved away from our activist base into the mass base. And that's what we've needed to do for a long time. And all of a sudden, we're doing it on three fronts and getting terrific responses. And we're in the press again. Of course, they're going to attack us, the press. They like us when we do things that don't challenge the 1%. Well, they say uh, rolling jubilee is just good capitalism. And Occupy Sandy, they see as relief rather than, and charity rather than mutual aid. They don't realize that we're organizing for a fight at the same time that we're doing relief work because we're going to have to fight or we're going to get what Katrina got, which is gentrification, running the poor people out of town, getting them out of public housing, tearing down public housing, privatizing the public schools, and busting the teachers' union. 